we're down in uh, New Mexico hunting late season muzzleloader elk with uh, GT Nuns Frontier Outfitting. Our guide for uh, this short hunt is Billy and uh, he, he says he's got a couple good bulls picked out for us already. We're just glassing a few areas here the night before the opening of the season. We're going to check and make sure we're, we're uh, anticipating the right elk for opening day. But uh, we've already seen some nice bulls up here and we're going to keep checking out this hillside. getting packed up here. We got a little hike this morning to get into where the hell car. Looks like the breeze dried down a little bit so it's gonna be nice shooting and uh, we're hoping for some big bulls. Hey we got set up here. First bull of the morning. A uh, little six maybe like 320 type. He's got a lot of his points. He's a little bit on the far side. We're gonna keep glass and see if we can find that big boy. It's like the most six by six poles I've seen. Uh, in one group when I've had a tag in my pocket. That's pretty exciting. Looks like we found our good bull. Yeah, that's the bull I seen yesterday morning. Yeah, that's a good bull. So, uh, what we can do is we can fell off these rocks right here and kind of take this ridge and try to keep it, and we might have to shoot 450 or 500, but I think we might be able to seal the deal at four. I love it when it's go time. It's go time, we're gonna go kill that bull. See if we can get that together. We're within 500 yards of that ball. We think he's right below us. We're gonna hang tight and see what happens. get on a good deer or something and it's a race to get on him it looks like uh, the reason why I bailed off that mountain's a couple hunters are coming up the other side it's kind of a bummer but uh, deal with it we'll sit here we'll watch and uh, we'll make a plan I'm Jeremy Winters, and on today's shooting demonstration, we're going to try to recreate the effects of air density. Now, 
For, for just uh, simple terms, uh, we're going to define air density as a given altitude and temperature. Uh, for every altitude and temperature, there's a given air density. So just to make it easier for everybody, we're going to use altitude and temperature when talking about air density. Now, why does air density have such a huge effect on our bullet? Well, it comes right down to the denser the air is, the more drag that is going to happen on the bullet, which is going to cause it to affect the trajectory more. So the lower in the elevation and the lower in the temperature, the denser the air becomes and the bullet has more drag downrange, which slows it down. The higher you go in elevation and the higher in temperature, the less dense the air is, the less drag acts upon the bullet and the bullet hits higher or has an easier time getting through that atmospheric condition. So at the range today, what we're going to do is we're going to get a quick zero on our gun just to make sure that we've got a good zero on it. And then we're going to take off. We've got a couple hour drive. We're going to head up on top of the mountain uh, so we can show a great uh, change in air density and show you why or the disadvantages of having an actual uh, yardage turret set in, in yards to a specific altitude and temperature. All right, looks like we've got a good zero down there on the steel. Uh, we're gonna pack up our stuff and we're gonna head to the mountain and show you the effect of air density on your trajectory. All right, we've made it up here. Uh, it took us a couple hours to drive up here, but we finally made it. Um, we are at 10,200 feet um, of elevation and we've got about 55 degrees in temperature. So it's gonna be a great example of how air density affects your trajectory and we're gonna show you the tools that we use to compensate for that. So what we're gonna do real quick here is we've got a target downrange at 900 yards. I'm gonna dial in 900 yards, not making any adjustment, and we're gonna see how high on that target we're gonna hit without making any compensation. And then we'll go down there and check the target out, and I'll explain to you how we make those compensations for air density in the field. All right, here we are at the target. Uh, we've got a 40 inch tall target. Um, here was what I was aiming at right here at the base. I tipped it up sideways so we could see more of the elevation on there. Um, we've got a three shot group here at 900 yards. Um, we are exactly 30 inches um, from the center of the group to the center of my bullseye. So from where we'd set our zero at 2,500 feet to 10,200 feet, we had 30 inches of vertical deflection in, this, in, in just this turret. So how do we make the compensation for this 2,000 foot turret up here at 10,000 feet? There are companies, other companies out there who build these same yardage turrets fixed at one elevation, and their solution is, well, let's just sell guys four or five different turrets. So you're up here on the mountain, well, it might be 7,500 feet or 10,000 feet. You're juggling around with these four or five different turrets, having to swap them out when you change elevations. It's just not a viable solution. And what we've noticed here at Gunworks is we've evolved from that solution, from going from multiple turrets to changing them out in the field. 
We've evolved to, uh, Aaron has designed the uh, BR2 rangefinder. Now, the reason this is such a special unit up here is, is I can run my 2,000 foot turret and the rangefinder has a built-in weather station and a built-in ballistics program. So I can take my data from my turret, input it into the rangefinder, and it will make the elevation, temperature, and shot angle corrections for me out here on the field. So with the rangefinder, instead of having my shots here, it would have told me to dial to the exact point of aim for that elevation, and my shots would have been here. So for all you guys out there who are running those fixed elevation turrets, we know there's a lot out there because uh, we've been building these things for years and years. The solution is, is to actually run the BR2 rangefinder and then it alleviates number one, multiple turrets, multiple charts out in the field, um, a handheld calculator. It, it alleviates all that just by running the BR2 rangefinder. Yeah, I'm Mike Davidson with Gunworks. Um, this week's episode, we're just going to do a, a real quick do-it-yourself tip on how to install a, a leveling device on your rifle scope. What that's going to do is keep you from, or help indicate if your rifle is canted or not, and help hopefully keep you from canting your rifle. Now, some people have trouble doing that, and some people don't. If you think you're one of those guys, where you're always looking through your scope and it looks upside down or sideways, you might you might invest in one of these levels. Now there's, there's a bunch out on the market. We like to use one from Caldwell or from Wheeler. Uh, they've got an anti-cant indicator. Uh, this customer in particular ordered one from Flatline Ops, so we're going to use that level on, on, this, uh, on this rifle. There's only a few tools you need. Uh, you need a, uh, some kind of leveling device. Same thing, you can get those at, uh, from Wheeler Engineering, uh, from Battenfield Technologies. Uh, or just uh, an old machine level will work just fine as well. We've got this rifle here. It's just about ready to go out the door. We've got uh, uh, a customer expecting this in a couple days. So we just, we're just going to get this level on and get it out of here. We've, we've got it set here in a, uh, uh, the best gun vise from Tipton. And it's, it's, uh, it's a pretty handy vise because you can, you can level it up and down, right and left. And uh, that's what we need to, to get this rifle level before we install the level. So uh, we'll, we'll take our level uh, from, from Wheeler Engineering there, and we'll just, we'll just level this rifle up. Now I'm just going to set this right on top of the scope. Now if somebody did a good job mounting the scope, the scope should be level with your action. I've got a uh, piece of machine bar stock here that we use to level our scopes up with. I'm just going to slide it in on the raceways of the action here, and let's check and see if it's level as well that matches up with the scope so we're good to go so I'm just going to clamp this in and get it level once we've got indication that our our scopes level then we'll then we can install the device now there's a couple places you can put this device uh, I like it forward of the parallax knob up in this area here. Some guys I'll see put it back here and that's fine too. It seems like it kind of gets in the way of the turret so I'll usually install it behind the, the turret assembly itself. Now you can run it on the right side or you can run it on the left side. So left or right. If you're a left hand shooter you might install it like that. If you're a right hand shooter you're usually your dominant eye is going to catch it up here. So we'll just we'll, we'll put this thing together and, and start tightening it up. The only thing that you need to pay attention to is when, when you're done, you want this thing to be level with your scope. So your bubble is leveled in here, same as on top of your scope. All right, uh, now there's no real torque specifications on this level itself. We're just, we just snugged it up enough and gave it just a little more so it doesn't turn on our, on our scope tube there. Uh, the bubble on top of the scope matches the, uh, the indicator itself and that's what you're looking for. Now for, for, a, for a practical reason why you might entertain using a scope level, uh, if you think about it, y y your, your vertical crosshair sits like this. If you've canted your level, or you, excuse me, if you've canted your rifle one way or the other, 
Uh, when you adjust that turret, it should go straight up. The vertical crosshair should just move uh, vertically. Um, if, if your rifle's canted, which means your scope's canted, when you adjust your turret, it adjusts it one way or the other way as long as well as elevation. And so using a, a, an anti-cant indicator uh, is going to help you elevate the way you're supposed to, not one way or the other. So if you have trouble uh, canning your rifle, uh, invest in one of these. Caldwell makes a nice one. Uh, Flatline Ops makes a, a nice one as well. They're easy to install um, and it could, save, it could save that shot. I'm Mike Davidson with Gunworks. Join us again next week for another shooting tip right here on Long Range Pursuit. We're going to hunt actually to the south where we think that big bull from opening morning ended up. Uh, we're on this ridge top um, looking really, really good. So I went ahead and loaded up the, the shooter just in case we get some action. So we're just getting ready to just kind of ease down this ridge line and we're going to check both sides on our way. our butts off to get on top of this tall peak. This is going to be a good spot. We're going to hang tight and uh, see if we can catch them in the shadowy parts before they feed out to those south facing slopes. That was a solid shot. Well, that, that non-typical come running out. That's the bull we were on to chase, but we weren't gonna, last morning, you know, last ditch effort to get on these elk. We weren't gonna screw around. Get our stuff gathered up, get down there. Wow. Hey, that turned out to be a pretty nice bull. Big 
big hole. So he was just right in that rock pile right there. Smoked him, stumbled down the hill, rolled right to this spot. That is all right. Look at that. So this is a bull we saw last night. Pretty good thirds, nice bottom end. We figured he was broke on the fifth, he is. Broke uh, behind the fourth over here. That made a nice bull. He was running with a non-typical that had a big old club on one side. And I thought last night, man, this is the last hunt we get this morning. If we see any of those bulls, we're not gonna be picky. We're yeah. gonna take him. But worked just like it was supposed to. Boy, look at that, right off the shoulder. Right off the other side. Hunting apparel for long-range pursuit provided by Sitka and Kinetrek Boots of Montana. License applications made through Cabela's Tags. Brought to you by Gunworks, G7 Optics, Night Force, Hornady, Flatline Ops, and Caldwell Shooting Supplies.